depth of God. So we need this. We need to be digging our wells. You need those, we're going to need those wells in the times of temptation. The Christian life is, is fraught with temptation because the adversary, the devil, he's moving around. I mean, he's seeking whom he can devour. Are you going to keep falling into the same old trap? You going to keep letting him get you? You going to keep, you, you know what happened last week? The same thing happened the week before and the week before and the week before. And he ain't even got to try no new tricks on you. We just, the same, falling into the same traps. The same old traps. Because of our own fleshly desires. And we won't lay aside every sin and every weight that so easily besets us. And so we keep picking those things back up. But eventually you're going to get caught holding those things. And then it may be too late for you. And you won't get the day of the salvation to come. You may be stuck on the condemnation. And you don't want that. Temptations should not be taken lightly. We can't become hard, hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Hebrews 3, 12 through 13. We might fall away during the time of temptation. Let's look at Luke 8, 13. 8.13. You don't want to get caught. They on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation they fall away. So who are you going to believe? You only believe him for a second. Do you think God is not a man that he should lie? So do you think that his word is only good for a certain period of time and then it's no longer valuable to you? His word is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. It changes not. And so what God said yesterday is still good for today. What God said five minutes ago is still good right this second. And so we have to stick and stay and hold on to the word of God. We got to hold on to it for dear life because it is, it is your very life. It is your very life. It is what gives us life. Outside of that, nothing else. You couldn't even surpass it. I wanted to tell this story real quick before I even go back to the times of temptation. But I was scrolling through one of my show, social media apps and uh, to hear a story by a guy named, his name was Wilson. And he was explaining how a rattlesnake had bitten one of his sheep in the face and how uh, it was one of the deadliest snakes that was in his, that's in his area. And he talked about how the sheep's face had swollen up terribly and how it really hurt the sheep really bad. These are the trials and the tribulations that we go through. These are the hiccups. These are the things that people say. These are the things that people do. This is what's going on. They said, he said, she said, we said. And then you get that bite up on your face. And then now you're hurt. But you don't stay there. He said the rattlesnake didn't know the kind of blood that flowed through that sheep. And how the anti-venom, a lot of anti-venoms is made by sheep's blood. So when the rattlesnake bit the sheep, as we are sheep, so when trials and tribulations come our way and things get in our path, whose blood is running through your veins? Are you going to stay where you are? Are you going to stay stuck? Are you just going to sit there? They said, he said the sheep wasn't even bothered by the snake bite as much as he was bothered. He said, because the sheep continued to strive, it continued to eat, it continued to do what the sheep was, is made to do. So he said he only swelled up for about two days, but the blood that was flowing through the lamb destroyed the venom of the serpent. So Wilson talked about how worried he was, but the sheep just didn't care. He said the sheep didn't care. He kept eating, he kept drinking, and he kept climbing. He kept eating, he kept drinking, he kept climbing. What are you eating? He kept eating. He kept drinking, and he kept climbing. So when you think about that as he kept eating, are you still in the midst of your trials and tribulations when you are hurting, when you are going through, when you are experiencing these things, are you still eating, are you still drinking, and are you still climbing? Or are you just saying, forget about it, I'm done, I'm through, I'm going to set it out, I ain't coming back, I ain't doing it. I ain't getting in the game. I'm not getting in the race. I'm just going to quit. 
even in the midst of the sheep being bit by the rattlesnake, he kept eating. I'm going to say it again. He kept drinking, and he kept climbing. Let that sit in. Let that just resonate in your soul. What do you do? Do you eat? Do you continue to eat? Do you continue to drink? And do you continue to climb? But I'm saying, what are you eating? Don't let nobody come in, in your ear and talk you up out of your salvation and talk you up out of doing what God has called you to do. And you say you have his blood running through your vein. It don't make sense. It just don't make sense. And oftentimes the serpents of life will reach out and, and bite us and inject poison in us. But the serpent cannot overcome the blood of the lamb. Cannot do it. He can't do it. Don't worry about the serpent and his bites. Make sure the blood of the lamb is just flowing through your veins. Is what you have to do. But in order to do that, you got to keep eating, drinking, and climbing. You got to keep climbing. You got to keep going. You cannot stop. You cannot stop. That is so powerful. You cannot stop. We're going to get bitten. We're going to, some things are going to hurt you. Some things are going to upset you. Some things are going to, you're going to have some setbacks with your health. You know, there's going to be some things, but you don't stop. You don't stop eating. You don't stop drinking and you don't stop climbing. Amen. We have to continue to dig these wells. We got to continue to dig the wells so that the community can come in. That was a place of where it was in the center so that everybody could come and draw from that water. If they're coming to you, what are they drawing? What are they drawing? We are disciples. We're called to be disciples of Christ. Amen. You got to be given something. Ain't no cotton mouths around here. We ain't thirsty or parched. You shouldn't be thirsty or parched. We got to come in. And if you are, somebody's able to give you a drink. But you can't draw from what you don't have. Amen. So we can't become hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. We can't get stuck there. We don't want to fall away during the time of temptation. This is not the time to get out the battle. This is not the time to sit on the sidelines. The Bible's already told us there's going to be a great falling away. And who is it that's falling away? Because if you're not a Christian, you ain't, you ain't never coming to the knowledge of the truth of who he truly is. So it's the Christians that are falling away. Are you paying attention? We need to be paying attention. We need our wells for the times, the periods of tribulation, which is what we're experiencing now. The Christian life is not an easy life. It's not an easy life. Jesus warned the apostles in John 16, 33. Let's look at that. John 16, 33. John 16, 33. Amen. Thank you, Lord. These things that I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He have overcome the world. He's already done it. You ain't got to fight with the world. You don't have to do it. You ought to be able to still be in peace when there's trouble around everywhere, on every corner from the north, the south, the east, and the west. You should still be in peace. We shouldn't be running around uh, panicking and acting like the world is acting, especially when we're trying to bring them in to where the water is. We're trying to draw them in. But if we're going to walk around and be dry like they are, then you're not going to be able to bring them in. You can't bring them in. Even during the times of now, everybody's talking about the gas prices. Everybody's talking about the war. This is just the beginning, the, 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 uh, the war and what's going on, and this is going on, and this is going on. But at this time, we still should be showing peace. Amen. They should be asking you what you got. That They want to have some of that. But if we weren't around here complaining and doing the same thing that they are, we can't draw them in. You can't draw them in. And that's most likely because you're not, you're not drinking from their well either. And so it goes back to we can't give them what we don't have. Amen. So we have to stay in our word. You have to stay in your word. When he said meditate on day and night, 
When you say meditate on that scripture, meditate there, therein day and night. Day is even when the sun is shining. Night is when the tribulations and the trouble is still coming. Are you going to meditate in his word? We got to stay in it. And so uh, Paul warned the disciples in Acts 14, 21 through 22. And you don't even have to go there because it's, it's, a, it's a lot of uh, scripture, but that'll give you something to meditate in day in and night. They're in day and night. Amen. Uh, the trials and tribulations that many of us face can be quite diverse. Some because we are Christians. I mean, that's just part of it. You know, if Jesus went through it, then who are we not to? You know, he had trials and tribulations, but he overcame them. Amen. He overcame them. And so you, but he had a connection with his father. He had a connection with his father. He had a connection to the well that never runs dry. And so if we'll get that same connection, we can overcome the same trials and tribulations as well because he's already done it. He's already walked the path. You know, you tell your kids, you ain't got to do that. I've already done it. You know, I'm just trying to help you and keep you from going through the same trouble that I went through. So let me just tell you, you ain't got to do it. Don't do it this way. The same way Jesus is telling us, I've already did it. You ain't got to do it. You ain't, you, you ain't got to go through this. You ain't got to go through them trials and tribulations. You ain't got to do it. You ain't got to walk them paths. And, because, and some of the other tribulations is because we share in the fatality, uh, fr fatalities of life. Sickness, pain, death, economic recession, loss of job, terrorism, war, natural calamities. So we better have our wells dug in advance if we want to survive the droughts. Are you going to survive the drought? What are you storing up? You know, wells can run dry. They, in case you didn't know that, but what are you storing up? It won't if you store up. And especially if you dig deep and dig in and dig into the source. His well, you'll never run dry. You'll never run dry. You got to be preparing for judgment. Remember what God has provided? What did God provide? He provided his son as an atonement for sin. 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 through 10. He provided the good news of salvation to the whole world. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Let's look at that. Man, that's something to be uh, happy about. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. He said unto them, but who do ye say that I am? I'm going to go on down. And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And I'm going to just go one more verse down. It said, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, for flesh and blood has not revealed unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Good news. We have to realize what we must do. We have to respond to the gospel of his grace. You have to respond to it. That's Acts chapter 2, verse 36 through 39. And we have to remain faithful in our devotion and our service. Jesus didn't quit. He didn't sit down. He kept digging the well so that we could continue forth with what he's called us to do. So we can't, we, we don't have the right to sit down. We don't have the right to tire out. We don't have the right to not go forth. We don't have the right to quit. What if he quit on us? Then we wouldn't be here today. Have you begun digging your wells by obeying the gospel of Christ? You have to prepare for temptation. Remember what God has provided. He has not allowed us to be tempted beyond what we're able. That's 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. Who is able to work all things for our good. That's Romans 8 and 28. All the scriptures telling us all these things in 31 through 39. His spirit, the Holy Spirit, has helped us to overcome. It's helped us to, to strengthen the inner man. 
That's Ephesians 3.16. Amen. It helps us to develop our character that is necessary. He's done so much for us, so much. You know, he gives us family, our spiritual family, to support in our efforts, to help you dig those wells so it doesn't run dry, so you don't run dry. Amen. You see, uh, Pastor Conley talked about the uh, uh, Moses uh, and had Aaron and Herod lifting up his arms. They lifted up his arms in order, and every time they let go, the battle was lost. But every time they kept him up, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how tired you get, if he's tired and quit and you tired and quit, we all die of thirst. It's over. So that's why Aaron's and hers, we got to continue the cycle and continue to move and continue to hold up the arms so that when one gets tired, the other can rotate in and out. We're not digging wells by ourselves. We don't have to dig wells by ourselves. That's why he himself has given us a spiritual family to help towards our efforts. He's given us himself as our father. That's 1 John 3 and 1. His children as brothers and sisters. His son as our advanced advocate and propitiation. He stands ready there. He stands there. The Holy Spirit is there ready to assist us, even when we have sinned. Whose blood will cleanse us from all sins as we confess. But we got to confess. You can't keep living the way that we're living and doing what we're doing. If you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep getting what you got. You know, they say when you keep doing that, that's insanity. So we have to realize what we must do. We have to realize. And so that means that we have to pray that you enter not into temptation. Jesus taught that on the sermon. He taught on the Sermon on the Mount. He told his disciples in Gethsemane. So we have to be filled with his spirit by, uh, by, by the word. Stay in the word. Stick to the word. You cannot go wrong. We got to sing praises. Make melodies in our hearts to the Lord. Amen. We cannot sit and be still. A lot of times we come in here and we act like we just dry, parched, and thirsty because we won't even open up our mouths. And we're expecting the praise team to stand up there for a whole hour and to worship God for us. We won't even open up our mouths. We won't do it. We won't do it. Do y'all not think that they don't get tired? Do y'all not think that once their arms begin to fall that we should be lifting it up? There shouldn't even be a gap in between praise and worship. I mean, if they voice go down, yours should be up. And I'm talking to myself, so don't, <laughs> I'm talking about me. So it's like there should never be a time that the wells should not be, they should continue to be dug. Teaching one another in song and letting the word dwell in us richly that this is all scripture develop and strengthen our relationships with members of our family so we got to keep communing with God in prayer we got to keep encouraging our families we got to keep telling them about the goodness of God and who he is we have to continue to exhort one another we got to continue to lift up each other's arms amen we got to continue on a daily basis to repent and confess when we sin, we know we sin daily. You ain't got to ask if, or, you know, that's like when we go to somebody, well, if I did something to offend you, if I did something to hurt you, if, well, if they saying you did, you, I mean, you got to take it as what it is and then confess and keep moving on. Don't stay there. So uh, we have to continue to, uh, to repent, you know, to God and then to one another. Amen. Are you digging wells by continually steadfast staying in prayer, in the word, and in fellowship? It says, don't forsake the assembly of the saints uh, come together in a manner which many are doing. Many, many have just said, forget it. Forget the fellowship. you no longer my family until I need something from you. Until, I, until, I, until you can give me what I need, uh, th th you can't do nothing for me. You can't do nothing for me. Until I'm until I, a death in my family, you now you my church family again. I'm just gonna keep it real. You know we you can't keep we can't keep being like that. We can't keep throwing somebody on the back burner and only calling them forth. Now you my family because I need something from you. It doesn't work like that. It don't work like that. You can't throw you can't throw me away. I can't throw you away. 
And that ain't just how it goes. And God ain't throwing us away, so we don't have the right to, to keep backing, going back and forth. You know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We got to keep preparing for tribulation. Remember what God has provided once again. Hope to help us to endure. A joyful hope that, might, that we might be patient in tribulations. Let's look at Romans 12 and 12. <clears throat> Excuse me. Romans 12 and 12. Did you keep me abreast of my time? 12 and 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, con uh, continuing in instant in prayer. Continuing instant in prayer. We got to stay there. And abounding hope empowered by the Spirit of God. Romans 15, 13. Let's see what that says. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Peace that only Christ can offer. He's the only one that can offer. A peace the world cannot provide. The world can't give you what you're looking for. The world will never give you what you're looking for, which is the reason why I don't understand why we stay out there so long. So much turmoil, so, much, so many problems, so many issues, but yet we stay out there for so long. We stay out there too long, way too long. One that can guard our hearts and our minds. We can only find strength is found only in Christ. And, that's, and he provides us with patience, with long-suffering, with joy, by which all things we can do in a spirit of contentment. In a spirit of contentment. The world is not going to give you what you're looking for. You're not going to be content with what the world is giving you. That's why is we can go out and buy new houses, get new houses, get new cars, get new furniture, get new hairdos, get new clothes, get new shoes, and we still never content. We still say we don't have. Closet with 100 pair of shoes, and we still saying, but I don't have. I don't have. I don't have. A house to sleep in with a roof over your head, not in the elements like they are over there in Ukraine right now and running for their very lives, and we still are complaining. Still are complaining. Still complaining. So somebody else, somebody may have a, a car, but the person that is walking may have wished that they had that car. I wish even that they had a bicycle. I wish that the, the person in a wheelchair wished that they could even ride the bicycle or either be able to walk. So, we're, we, we, you know, we have so much to be grateful for, so much to be thankful for. So there's so much contentment in Christ. I mean, we have food in our refrigerators. We have too much food in our refrigerators. We throw most of it away anyway. You know, just too much, too many clothes. We have so many. I cleaned out my closet and took piles of clothes that filled, um, gave a lot of it away and then still had some left to take to the goodwill. And my closet was still full. Still full. Still full and still buying, still buying. So that's what I'm just saying. So the world, we're not content. Oh, your contentment is only going to be in Christ. Only with him. So we got the comfort. You use, uh, use God's word for comfort uh, and hope and encouragement. We got to focus on his hope. Set our minds on the grace to be uh, revealed. Benefiting from the patience and comfort of the scriptures. You're only going to find that in God's word. Let's look at Romans 15 and 4. Romans 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that through patience and comfort of the scriptures we might have hope. 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 Amen. We have to continue through fervent prayer. We have to stay in prayer. 
you know, stay in prayer personally. Like, how do you do that? You, 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 it's, you're able to do that. You're able to do that. You're really able to do that. You're really able to even stay in his word day and night too. Uh, meditate on his word. Take a scripture and meditate on that day and night. You know, any thought that come into your mind and cast it down, amen, that is not, that is not uh, you know, in the word of God, amen, and just keep, uh, continue to stay in the word. Continue to go back to the word. Continue to say, God, you said this. Even if it's one scripture that you have to stand on and meditate, dig, search, look up those words, find meaning to it, amen, so that you can write it on the tablets of your, on your heart. Amen. Your word have I hid in my heart so that I might not sin against thee. Hide his word in your heart. Stand on it. Stay on it. Think on it. Think on it. Amen. Uh, we have to uh, also put on the full armor of God. We got to put on the full armor of God. Stay armored up. You cannot go into a battle without your armor. You may lose your very life or you may lose a limb. You may lose something. 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 If you're not if you're not putting on the full armor of God. So we have to build our network of brethren. Build our network. Stay connected to one another. Stay connected to the house so that we can continue to dig our wells so that our wells don't run dry. They don't run dry because when you get tired, somebody else has the ability to continue to dig, to continue to supply water to you. You know how you get those... Um, when you get, you, you know, your elderly family, you have your elderly family and, 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 and they get to a point where they're not well and they, um, you have to care for them. You have to continue to give them water. You have to continue to 